This is Rubius Hagrid. He's a half-giant groundskeeper at an elite private school, an importer of exotic animals, and quite possibly, an agent of the Dark Lord Voldemort. Welcome to Explainiac, I'm Dan Casey, and today we're exploring the dark Harry Potter theory that everyone's favorite holly jolly groundskeeper Hagrid was actually a Death Eater all along. Dreamed up by Harry Potter fan Zach Hansen in what I can only assume was a haze of butterbeer, sleepless nights, and Bertie Bot's every flavor beans, this theory posits that Hagrid is secretly a servant of Voldemort, working an even deeper cover than Severus Snape. You wouldn't be talking about me now, would you? For a complete breakdown of Hansen's exhaustive theory, check out the link in the description below and maybe make like a snack or something because it is 21 pages long. Yep, that's me. You're probably wondering how I got into this mess. Well, I hate myself and I love Harry Potter. Anyway, back to the show. Hansen breaks down the theory into five key points, which we're gonna go through one by one to examine the evidence. First of all, Hansen claims that Hagrid is a high-ranking servant of Lord Voldemort. Now, you might be rolling your eyes, but Voldemort has Death Eaters stationed all over the place, within the Ministry of Magic, in the Order of the Phoenix, and in the upper echelons of wizarding society. So it would stand to reason that he would at least have agents at Hogwarts as well. Now, having Severus Snape to keep track of Dumbledore and your soul's living SD card Harry Potter without a backup plan? Well, that just seems like poor planning. The theory cites incidents where Hagrid personally delivered Harry to Voldemort, like in the Forbidden Forest and the Sorcerer's Stone, an area so dangerous that Hagrid himself deemed fit to carry a crossbow, only for him to send a couple of 11-year-olds off on their own to encounter Voldemort straight up glurping unicorn blood. He also conveniently let slip a slew of breadcrumbs that ultimately lead Harry, Ron, and Hermione to Voldemort and the Sorcerer's Stone. Likewise, the theory alleges that Hagrid led Harry directly to Voldemort again during the Triwizard Tournament in the Goblet of Fire by giving Harry advanced knowledge of the challenges he'd be facing, so that way he could ensure that Harry would touch the port key that would teleport him and Cedric Diggory to a showdown with he who must not be named. R.I.P. Cedric. He's Batman now. This requires a particularly cynical reading of the source material, and it's honestly a little disheartening to reimagine Hagrid in this context, but this is just the tip of the iceberg, according to Hansen. Now, the second point in this theory states that Hagrid is secretly much more talented of a liar than he lets on. So if you take Hagrid at face value, it's easy to see him as the Wizarding World's version of the Ghost of Christmas Present. He's this big, ruddy face, large-hearted and often bumbling guy who wears his emotions on his sleeve and just loves dangerous animals. He's like, he should live in the Florida of the Wizarding World. But is Hagrid simply playing the fool, giving people purposefully low expectations for him, pretending to be this big old goofball so he can operate in secrecy? Well, case in point, Hagrid is alleged to spread misinformation and discord in the wizarding world when he apparently tells the bartender in the Three Broomsticks top secret info about Sirius Black. That scene continues with Hagrid yelling private details about Sirius that would help confirm to any who overheard that Sirius was in fact a dangerous mass murderer rather than a escaped convict and a very good boy. Now, another example offered is when, in Order of the Phoenix, Hagrid tells of his mission to recruit the Giants in the Ural Mountains. He claims that negotiations turn sour and the Death Eaters wind up recruiting them instead. Now, according to Hansen, Hagrid's lying here to disguise the fact that he either passed along info about the Giants' location to the Death Eaters, or he purposefully torpedoed negotiations to waste the Order of the Phoenix's time and resources. Now, look, I'll be honest, Hagrid probably isn't as oafish as people assume, but I have trouble believing he's playing four dimensional chess against a skilled Occlumens like Severus Snape. But then again, Hansen has an explanation for this as well. Hagrid's supposed knack for lying leads us directly into the theory's third point. Hagrid is secretly a much more talented wizard than he lets on. Now, from what we understand, Hagrid was expelled from Hogwarts during his third year after being framed by Tom Riddle for the crime of opening the Chamber of Secrets, leading to the death of a Muggle-born student. Now, Hagrid was forbidden from practicing magic, his wand was snapped, and the rest, as they say, is Hogwarts a history. Yet, in his very first appearance, we learn that Hagrid is capable of highly advanced magic that allows him to fast travel. 
When Hagrid drops the wee baby Harry off of the Dursley residence, he tells Dumbledore and McGonagall he was able to get baby Harry out before the muggles started swarming around the site of his parents' murder. Now, given that Hagrid appeared at Godric's Hollow before any emergency services arrived, he'd need to be able to move in pretty quickly. In the Deathly Hallows, Hagrid mentions that he's too heavy to ride a broom or a Thestral, and Hogwarts students don't learn how to apparate until fifth year, which was at least two years after Hagrid was expelled. Now, we see further evidence of Hagrid's magical ability when he transfigures Dudley to have a pig's tail that is so permanent, Dudley had to have it surgically removed. Now, he claims it was an accident, but he makes no attempts to reverse the spell. He targets Dudley with utter malice and violates all manner of wizarding law in doing so. Most of all, this indicates that Hagrid is capable of advanced magic beyond what we might expect. He transfigured that little porker into a real hog. Now just ask yourself, what's more likely here? Hagrid's a powerful dark wizard with no remorse, or he just wanted to dunk on little duddykins? Now moving on to the theory's fourth point, Hagrid has been performing deep cover tradecraft, espionage, source validation, sabotage, and spotting and assessing for Voldemort. That sounds cool as hell. Now, this is part and parcel of some of the previous points that Hansen made about Hagrid being this talented wizard and talented liar. Now, he'd naturally be able to cover his tracks without anyone being the wiser if we assume these points to be true. Hagrid is not only a trusted faculty member at Hogwarts and a member of the Order of the Phoenix, but he has close personal relationships with Dumbledore and Harry. To wit, Hagrid purchases Harry a seemingly innocuous birthday present, the Snow White Owl Hedwig, which Harry loves dearly. He used to send all manner of sensitive wizard texts. In the Goblet of Fire, Sirius even tells Harry to stop using Hedwig and always use different owls, which Hermione explains is because Hedwig attracts too much attention and stands out from the crowd with her snow white coloration. So in essence, Hagrid gave Harry and the Death Eaters an easily trackable beacon who often has privileged information in her beacon. She's a bird. Now, according to the theory, he's grooming these children to maintain access to them so he can keep tabs on them and help Voldemort facilitate his sinister plans. Now, this is maybe Hansen's most salient and believable point. Hagrid's proximity to Harry and his friendship with the main trio more often than not leads them to nearly dying, getting expelled, or some combination of the two. If Hagrid's not a spy, well, he's at least a walking OSHA violation. Last but not least, the theory alleges that Hagrid isn't a new recruit to the Death Eaters. Rather, it states that Hagrid has been in the service of Lord Voldemort at least since the First Wizarding War, potentially since his time at Hogwarts. I know, I know. Gasp, you should. Now, this is one of the wildest claims in the theory, but it's predicated largely on Hagrid appearing on the scene moments after Voldemort's attack on the Potters at Godric's Hollow. The Potters' location was known only to their secret keeper, Peter Pettigrew, aka Wormtail, as per the binding of the Fidelius charm. Wormtail, as we know, was also a Death Eater who later betrayed their location to Voldemort. But how did Hagrid know where to go? Dumbledore wasn't a secret keeper. It's not like he could have magically told Hagrid the answer once the Fidelius charm expired. Inspired, the likelier answer here is that because Hagrid was also a Death Eater, Wormtail relayed the information to him, thus letting Hagrid show up on the scene before anyone else. The theory also claims that Hagrid has an understanding of how Voldemort's horcruxes work. In an early conversation with Harry, he mentioned that Voldemort didn't actually die and gives an oddly specific description of Voldemort's current state of being that turns out to be awfully on the nose. Some say he died. Codswallop, in my opinion. to know if he had enough human left in him to die. Most of us reckon he's just still out there somewhere, but lost his powers. Too weak to carry on. <clears throat> Apologies to Robbie Coltrane. Is this just a good guess by an oaf with a heart of gold? Or is this an arrogant flex by a master spy? Only time will tell. Hagrid also confirms to Harry at Diagonilly in the first book that Voldemort used to be a Slytherin and the two were at Hogwarts together years ago. Now, this is not a well-known fact. No one really knows that Tom Riddle was Voldemort and that Tom Riddle was a Slytherin. This is something that's only mentioned by the likes of Dumbledore and Slughorn. So how would Hagrid know this unless he knew who Voldemort really was? Now, this is just a small taste of Hanson's truly wild theory, but I have to say, it's an incredibly well-crafted, thoughtful, and insanely detailed piece of theory crafting. Is it plausible? Well, if you're willing to put on a tinfoil hat made 
made of sheer cynicism, then yeah, absolutely. In reality, not so much, but it does offer a delightfully dark reading on one of the Harry Potter series' most jovial and lovable characters that is at least worthy of discussion. And if you have not already, I urge you check out his full theory in all of its bonkers glory, which again, you can access via a link in the description below. But in the meantime, tell me, what do you think? Do you believe that Hagrid is secretly a Death Eater? What's your favorite Harry Potter fan theory? Let me know in the comments below and give me an evil thumbs up while you're there. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to this channel and hit that notification bell so you never miss a new episode of Explainiac. And if you want even more insane fan theories, be sure to check out previous Explainiac episodes, which you can watch right now on all of Nerdist's channels. And if you have suggestions for future episodes, leave them in the comments or tweet me directly at Dan Casey. This is an evolving process and I want you to be a part of it. And remember, not everything in life can be explained, but for everything else, there's this show.